Well, for Rootcaster, my name's John Nelson, and we are a hi-fi dealer based between Reading and Oxford in the UK. Today, we're just going to be talking about an accessory to the Rose range of streamers. Besides me, I've got the three of the current streamers. We've got the RS201E at the top, the RS520 in the middle, and the flagship RS150B at the bottom. Check out our channel for videos on, on these products yes, and doctor. on the matching power amp, the RA180, uh, that goes with the RS150B. Along with the snappily named RS201E, RS520, RS150B, there is a CD drive called the RSA780CD. <laughs> <laughs> Along with the snappily named RS201E, RS520, RS150B, the CD player is called the RSA780CD. All very easy to remember. Anyway, let's have a look what we get in the package for the RSA780. So the CD drive, the RSA780, arrives in a bag, two boxes uh, in a sealed bag. Open that up. And the actual drive itself, first of all. And it's literally just a simple manual and the actual drive itself, which is, it feels quite heavy, in a nice bag, and it's a drive within a solid, heavy aluminium enclosure, uh, slot loading drive, and it's got a simple USB port on the rear. And in the accessory pack, no doubt there is a USB cable nice little bag and a cable USB suitable cable to go in the back so this goes in the back of the CD drive like so and then plugs into the back of any of the streamers all right to demonstrate this I will plug the uh, CD player into the RS520 and we'll just demonstrate its use. So I'm going to sit that on top of this one, plug it into this one, any of the USB ports on the back. So we plug the RSA 780 CD player into one of the USB ports on the back of the Rose 520. On the apps on the front here, uh, there's, I use this one called CD Play, so I'll open up that app. And I've got a Bob Marley CD here. So let's just pick that up, put that in the unit. It draws it in uh, and it reads the disc. And what we'll see, you can just hear the drive spin up a little bit maybe. And when it's finished reading the disc, it will show us the contents on the disc. Might take a couple of seconds to do that. Okay, okay, and in fact, it started playing straight away. So it's, it's I'll just, turn that down so that I don't have any problems with copyright on YouTube. Um, so it's found the metadata for the disc, so it's got the album art and it's got all the tracks and it started playing and if I want to I can I can change the track so if I want to stir it up I can just press that track and it will change to that just like a normal CD player would. So a very nice feature uh, to be able to play your conventional media directly through the unit. Just as you would expect, simple, uh, with the added bonus that it actually shows the track and title information that uh, you're playing on the, from the actual physical disc. Uh, if I want to stop it, I can just pause it and to eject it, there's an eject button here. It says, do I want to do that? Yes, I do and out will pop the disc, like so. There's another feature that we can use a CD drive for, and that's for actual CD ripping. So what we just demonstrated was obviously putting the disc in and playing directly from the CD directly through the system. Uh, it does also support CD ripping, so that's saving the content of the disc for later playback through the system. 
Uh, and to do that, that works best if you have got an internal hard drive fitted. Again, another feature is that each of these units will allow you to fit internal storage, typically a, a solid state uh, drive like this. Uh, this is, it happens to be a four terabyte solid state Samsung disc, but that can be fitted into each of the units uh, here to provide internal storage. So you can load your music collection either from the CD or indeed across uh, the network uh, onto uh, the internal storage for playback. So a, a kind of a NAS uh, music storage library within the actual unit itself. Uh, so before we go onto the CD ripping, we'll just cover fitting a, uh, an internal storage. Now obviously we, you can buy these units pre-configured from us with the storage fitted. So if you can't be bothered with the technicalities, we will do that for you. Right, so what we're going to do now is take this pile of part and we're going to fit an internal drive into uh, the RS520 uh, and we'll then go on and demonstrate the CD ripping capability. On the bottom of each of the products there is a, an access panel here uh, which you can take off which will allow us to fit the internal uh, two and a half inch drive. This is the one on the 520 which is one that we're going to do on the 150 again you can see the access panel at the bottom there flip the uh, rs 150b on its back on some protective foam and there's just a couple of phillips screws um, to remove which will give us access to this that then allows us to take the panel off and the actual drive fits in this panel so we just fit that in here like so uh, there are screw holes and the screws are included with the with the product so all that we need to do is put our screws in here and then we'll fit that back in all right so we've got the caddy here we've got our drive here we've got our screws uh, when we're fitting the drive into the caddy you need to make sure that the sockets on the back of the SATA connection are in the right orientation to go in the socket in here so it's in this instance it's uh, this way with the label at the top and then we just put in these four screws here now just put this in here like so goes in there nice and easy and then we secure the caddy back in here with the two screws the physical drive installed uh, like i say we can do this for you and supply them pre-fitted with the drives when it comes to connecting the, the CD drive, I've got a choice of any of these three uh, ports. So just plug it in like so. And you can sit it by the side, or I guess on the top, if it's not blocking these air vents too much. Require any power, it's powered directly from the unit over the USB cable. So no external power supply is required. All right, so we've now we've reconnected everything. I've put power in the back. Uh, I've put data in the back, speakers connected, and the CD drive is connected. Uh, what we need to do now is initialize the hard drive. So I'm going to go into settings. I'm going to go into storage settings. There's an option here, SSD format. Do you want to format the SSD formatting erases all the data on the drive. Yes, we do. So we're going to format that. All right, so that's now formatted. Whenever a drive is plugged in, whether it be internally or externally, you could do this as an external USB drive if you wanted to. It offers you the option to scan the database so it's just look to see if there's any content on the internal drive that we just fitted in here. Now there isn't any, so it won't find any. All right, but that's the drive fitted. It's initialized. It's now ready to go. If I go back to our main menu and I go back to my CD player, um, I can, I'll go and put my uh, George Michael album back in. and you can hear it reading the drive, spinning up. And we've got the option to, it'll start playing immediately as soon as it hears the, or as soon as it's read the metadata. It's got the track information, it's got the album art, and it started playing. Again, I'm gonna mute that so we don't have problems with 
uh, YouTube. Uh, but also, we've got this, uh, next to the eject button, there is this download button. And this will allow us stop playing and go to the CD ripping. Yes, confirm. When we first go into the CD ripping, the first thing, it shows us all the track and title information here. And it gives us an option of where it's going to go. So we need to set the path where it wants to go. So we'll click on here. It's found our internal drive. So we'll put select that and confirm. And we will then start ripping. I think that's probably a one-off uh, process. We've confirmed the ripping. You can hear the drive spin up and it is in the process of ripping that data. And it gives you a percentage progress of how much it has converted. You've also got a choice of format here. You can see it's in FLAC, um, whether it allows me to change. So I've got uh, FLAC compressed or WAV. So I presume this is uncompressed. Uh, FLAC is the format that it is defaulted to. We'll pause the video and come back when the um, CD has been ripped. One thing to note is that whilst we're doing the CD ripping here, we can continue to use the unit for other things. So if I go back to the home screen, I could select uh, playback from Tidal or Quobos, uh, or indeed if I go into the music app, which is here, um, it's already found the music that we've we've started to rip off this physical CD. So I've got the George Michael album has come up and I can add this to the queue and I can play that content. Uh, so if I increase the volume a little, so that's playing. So the music's been ripped off this CD, loaded internally into the solid state drive that we fitted earlier and he's playing back from that. All right, so that's how we rip CDs using the CD drive itself. Uh, but the storage that's in here, we can copy content to or from. So if we've got some existing digital music that lives on a computer or on a thumb drive, etc., we can copy it to the uh, drive internally on the unit. Uh, if it's a physical media, like a USB pocket drive or thumb drive, you can plug it into the back and do the copy. So if you've got music which lives on a computer or a network hard drive, uh, you can copy content across the network onto the internal hard drive of the rows. And we'll just go on and demonstrate how we do that. So if we want to copy content to the internal hard drive across the network, we need to enable the Windows Share or SMB Share on the device. And to do that, we go into System Settings. We've noted our IP address from before in our case 10.1.100.112 and we go into storage settings and we want to go into this SMB ID PW settings so SMB ID and password so this is basically where we set the username and password that we're going to use to connect and to activate the, um, the SMB service so I go in here now we did have some difficulty with this you need to make sure that you set even though it's got password and workgroup in here you need to put data in each of these settings so I'm going to put in ID I'm going to put ripcaster that's our username and our password I'm going to be um, very secure and put John one two three four and work group I'm, I'm going to put in I'm going to over type this even though a work group is what I want I'm going to actually put that in so work group work group and then I'm going to confirm that it says it saved it and you'll notice over here it says that the SMB service is now on so at this point we should be able to see this as a network file share from any computer on our network we'll switch over to a Mac first and then we'll try the same from a PC Right, so here we are, we've got my Mac desktop up and I've selected the music folder on my local uh, Mac computer. I've selected the music folder on my Mac computer, I've got some music here that I want to copy across the network to the rows. So to do that I go to the Go menu and connect to server and I put in here SMB colon 
forward slash forward slash and then the IP address that we took off the front of the rows. Yours will obviously be different, but in our instance it's 10.1.100.1.2 and I select connect. It's now going to prompt me for a username and password and this is the SMB ID and password that we put into the rows. So I'll put that in as ripcaster and the password as uh, john123 and then hit connect. 1234 even and hit connect. All right, so at this point it then shows us a number of shares. Not quite sure what the top three are, but rose disk is what we want. And you can see in Finder it's shown it. This is a tabbed view. Yours might be slightly different to this, but it's opened it up. And you can see, in fact, the CD that we ripped earlier on in the video, this George Michael disc. If I go into that folder, I can see all the individual tracks within the George Michael folder. All right, so this is our uh, view of the data which lives on the rows. If I go back to my music folder, which is the data which lives on my Mac, I can select those two uh, folders, Craftwork and London Grammar. I can do Control C, copy or edit and copy two items. I can then go and select my rows disk and I can go Control V or edit, paste. And this will now copy the content across the network onto the internal drive within the actual rows RS520. We'll let that finish and then we'll be able to play them directly on the front of the rows. Okay, so the copy's finished. Let's switch back to the rows and let's see if we can access the uh, London Grammar or Craftwork. Switched over to the rows now. Uh, we've copied the data from our Mac computer onto the internal hard drive in here. So let's just check that we can see that. If we go into system settings, go into system settings and media library, we should rescan DB is what we want to do. So we click OK. Do you want to scan? Yes, we do. And this is what this will do is rebuild the index. Look at all the new tracks. So we had George Michael on there originally. It should now find the other tracks that we've added into it. You'll be able to see that if we now go into music, you can now see that we've now got the albums that we copied across. So the London Grammar and the Kraftwerk, as well as the original George Michael that we ripped on the CD drive. So we've connected up our Windows machine here. Again, I'm looking at the initially at the music folder on the PC. I've got a Again, a couple of albums there, Florence and Machine, Fink, etc. Um, so it's Windows 10, but this works on Windows uh, 11 as well. Uh, if you go over to the Start menu and just do right-click and then hit Run, and where it says Open, uh, what we put in is backslash, backslash, and then the IP address again off the front of the unit. So that's 10.1.100.112 in our instance. And it should come up and prompt us for our network credentials, which again are the ones that we entered in. So it's Ripcaster and John1234 in our demonstration. And again, we can see the, uh, the folders which are there. Again, these probably system folders and then the one that we're interested in, which is Rose Disk. And again, we can see the George Michael track that we uh, ripped the craft work and the London grammar that we copied from the Mac. And so if we want to copy uh, from the internal hard drive on our PC, so we'll copy the Fink. Again, I could do Control C to copy or right click and copy. Go over to the window for the rows. And again, a Control V to paste or right click and paste. And that will then copy the uh, file from our internal drive on our PC across to the internal drive on the rows. One thing to note about this uh, operation is two-way. So if, for example, you had ripped a load of CDs using the CD-ROM drive onto the rows and you wanted to copy those onto something else to play in your car or to play on a different system, 
uh, you could just use uh, exactly the same technique but to copy from the rows to an external device. So you just select the files on the, on the rows and copy them to your target device. I hope you found that useful. So that was a quick guide to how to use this Rose CD-ROM drive. Works with any of the Rose streamers, plugs in via USB, no external power, can be used for CD playback as well as CD ripping. If you'd like to see the Rose range, you're most welcome to visit us at Ripcaster and you can see and hear the products for yourself. Thanks for watching.